So the presentation that I uh, gave at the ASAR meeting uh, this past Sunday described the efficacy and safety results of a phase two randomized study of the mRNA vaccine 4157 from Moderna with pembrolizumab versus pembrolizumab alone. This was a moderate-sized phase two randomized study of 157 patients in which there was a two-to-one randomization between vaccine with pembrolizumab versus pembrolizumab alone. Patients received standard pembrolizumab at 200 milligrams every three weeks intravenously for one year, total of 18 doses in the control arm, or they received the same pembrolizumab treatment with a messenger RNA vaccine 4157 that was given starting usually after the third or fourth dose, given for nine doses at one milligram intramuscularly. And then, of course, the patient would finish the pembrolizumab alone to complete the one year of therapy in both arms. The messenger RNA vaccine was a customized vaccine because it had up to 34 neoantigen sequences within it. And uh, 91% of patients had all 34, and the remaining 9% had between 9 and 32 neoantigen sequences within their vaccine. This was a single-strand RNA encapsulated vaccine. And in this study, the toxicity data showed that there was very little difference in either the serious adverse events or the grade 3, 4 immune-related adverse events between the groups. Of course, as you can imagine, in the combination group, there were more side effects that related to the injection of the vaccine, chiefly redness and pain at the injection site, similar to what we'd see with a COVID mRNA vaccine, uh, feverishness, chills, lethargy, and some fatigue, as well as some muscle aches, usually lasting between 24 and 48 hours. The efficacy results, however, were quite impressive in that there was, over time, with two years of follow-up in each group, a hazard ratio of 0.56 for the primary endpoint of recurrence-free survival, reflecting a 44% reduction in the risk of relapse over time during that two-year follow-up period. At the landmark of 18 months, there was a difference between 78% recurrence-free survival in the combination arm and 62% in the control arm, reflecting a 16 percentage point absolute difference, which is quite impressive. There are distant metastasis-free survival due to come out that will be presented within the next six weeks at the ASCO meeting. There are correlative marker studies that were presented as part of a poster, which show that whether you had a high or a low tumor mutational burden, arbitrarily assigned as 10 mutations per megabase that the hazard ratio for benefit didn't really change, you still benefited from the combination versus the single agent. And if you had PDL1 high or low, PDL1 high meaning more than 1% versus 1% or less, that you still had benefit with hazard ratios that were quite favorable, whether it would be PD1 high or PD1 low. So whatever the prognostic groups within the uh, stage three and four resected patients, there was clear benefit for the combination versus single agent pembrolizumab. So the conclusion was within the limitations of a moderate size phase two randomized trial, there was evidence of benefit for the combination of an mRNA vaccine with pembrolizumab, where that mRNA vaccine encoded up to 34 neoantigens compared to the reference control arm of pembrolizumab alone, which is of course FDA approved in the US and approved by many regulatory agencies for resected stage three melanoma around the world. 